Today, we're gonna to be diving into the world of nutrition and focusing on the key points to optimize your results in the gym. Now, full disclosure, we acknowledge that nutrition is really important, but we're not those people that say it's 80% nutrition and 20% training because we actually train hard and we want you guys to as well. But we know nutrition can be confusing with all these coaches, trainers, and fitness influencers preaching one diet and one diet only. When we know there's multiple ways to diet, and if you know these key principles, you can pick the right diet at any time and make great progress. First up, we have calories. These little units of energy fuel our bodies and are crucial for our survival. But they also play a really important role in shaping our physique and fueling our performance in the gym. This is where the term energy balance comes in. And that is the relationship between the total energy being consumed through the diet from food and drink versus the amount of energy our body is expending. Now to maintain our body weight, we need to be in a situation where the energy we consume from food and drink is the same as the energy that we're expending in daily activity. This is what we like to call a neutral energy balance. And what we essentially achieve here is body mass maintenance. Now, if we wanted to get shredded or maybe lose a little bit of body weight, we need to create what we call a negative energy balance. And this is where the energy that we're consuming from food and drink is less than the energy we're expending through activity. Now, for some of you throughout the year, you're going to wanna to be adding some muscle size and developing some muscles in specific areas. You might even need to add some body size for a weight class in powerlifting. And this is where we need to be in a positive energy balance where we're consuming more calories than we're expending through our activity to add that extra tissue. So as you can see, your goals will heavily influence what energy environment you're trying to make. Now that we've spoken about calories, we need to move on to macronutrients. And a common thing that people get wrong with their nutrition is their ratios of carbs, fats, and protein in relation to their goals and preferences. The three major macronutrients are carbohydrates, proteins, and fats. And they all serve individual roles within our body to facilitate function, growth, repair, and energy supply. And because of this, the ratio of macronutrients from person to person can be quite different. We obviously have all different goals and preferences, but we aren't those boring, it depends like coaches. We're gonna give you some really good take homes in this video. Now, most of you watching this video would be heavily invested in strength, body composition change, and performance. And this means your macronutrient ratios would be heavily skewed towards high protein, high carbohydrates, and low fat. And this is because you have higher energy demands, higher recovery demands, and both of those things are aided by the consumption of carbohydrates and protein. Now we totally acknowledge that fats are still necessary in the diet. So don't come at us with your pitchforks thinking we're a bunch of fat phobes because we're not. Now once we have our calories and macronutrient ratios sorted, we need to consider the foods we eat because this is where we get our micronutrients from. Now remember all those times that mum said to eat your vegetables? She probably had no idea why, but she was onto something. And that's because foods like plants, vegetables, and fruits are heavily packed full of micronutrients. Now as a bit of a cheat code to get your macronutrients in, we recommend getting five different vegetables, plants, or fruits in five different colors in a form of cooked, semi-cooked, and raw over the day to get as much macronutrients in as possible and simply dot your I's and cross your T's. Now we've only spoken about plants, veggies and fruits, but there's also other foods that we want to be in the foundation of our diet, which we typically call whole foods. So these are your plants, your veggies, your starches, your whole grains, your lean meats, any good healthy fats. Now what about processed food? The foundation of your diet is coming typically from whole foods. There's nothing wrong with a bit of processed food to fill the gaps. The last thing we wanna be doing is eliminating food groups and putting people in situations where processed food might be a little bit more convenient for their situation. So where possible, get as many whole foods in your diet as you can, but we also acknowledge that a bit of processed food here and there isn't really gonna hurt anyone. And if anything, it can help you stay on track with your diet because those foods are you know, somewhat typically more tastier. So we can put some foods that we like in our diet and it might increase the likelihood of us sticking to it. So now we have our calories, macros, and our food types sorted out. We need to think about how many meals are we going to have in a day. Now, if somebody tells you that the more meals that you eat in the day increases your metabolism, I can tell you now that is straight up bullshit. Now there's no optimal meal frequency, but we believe around four to six feedings would benefit most people. Now, a lot of you have probably asked the question, does meal timing matter? And it kind of does. If you wanna optimize your performance in the gym and maximize your progress over time, you'd be wanting to time your feedings around your workout. And this is where it's probably beneficial to have a serving of carbohydrates and protein pre and post workout. Now we're at the juicy parts. Supplements, not those supplements. Supplements aren't magic. They're there to fill gaps in our nutrition 
that we can't get from food, whether it's based on our goals, preferences, or access to certain food types. We can also use supplementation to improve our performance in the gym or even our recovery. And generally, the most popular supplements that we'll recommend are a whole food multivitamin, a protein powder of some kind, some omega-3 supplementation, maybe some magnesium depending on your diet overall, some caffeine or a pre-workout, and creatine. Now, this is not an exclusive list and it is needs-based, but we can guarantee that these supplements will give you some form of benefit and won't burn your pocket at the same time. The last key aspect of this video is the most important, and that is your diet adherence. Ask yourself, can you stick to your diet for a long period of time? If you're one of those people who sticks to a diet for three to four days and then falls off the wagon and says they're gonna start again Monday, it means your diet sucks for you. It doesn't mean your diet might not work for somebody else, but for you, it could be too restrictive, too extreme, not regimented enough, or a combination of all of them. If you wanna transform your physique, increase your strength, or train like a boss, you must pick a diet that you can stay on long term. Now, as always, if you thought this video was helpful, please like the video, subscribe to our channel, and even leave a comment if you have one. And don't forget to check out our results quiz, which is in the link in the description, which gives you an access to our training app for one month, completely free, no obligations attached to it.